Let's get to the touch screen and another story that brought some sensationalism over the weekend. Al Jazeera documentary published a gentleman, nice looking uh, guy, uh, who says that um, he, he's described as a money launderer and it is said that uh, President Akufa, this is not a very long story, I'll deal with it very quickly. It is said that President Akufa, the guy says President Akufa was his lawyer, sort of alludes to the fact that President Akufa is some friend of his or something like that. The guy is positioned as a gold scammer and money launderer. And quickly, the narrative in Ghana is that, hey, Akufa is money laundering, he gets that. Oh. So the pension, the pension to take political advantage of everything. You take political advantage of things that you have created with your brain or things that you have achieved with your experience. You can take political advantage of that. But you can't take political advantage of every gossip. Every gossip that without even dealing with it. And tonight we're going to deal with it. And you will see that any cursory appreciation of the story will raise all the red flags, will be blazed. Any cursory. So you wonder whether people are just trying to do mischief and take political advantage. Or the worst case scenario, the worst case scenario is that they probably truly cannot comprehend, which is sad if, that is the, if that's the outcome. I sincerely hope that's not the outcome. Not that they cannot comprehend, but that they are just being mischief and we call them out. I think I like that conclusion. It should be that. If it is that they cannot comprehend, then we are in trouble as a country. But if it is that they are just trying to do mischief and take political advantage, we call them out and that's, that should end it. I hope it is the latter. Okay, so it's a story about President Akufado, and this guy says Akufado is his lawyer. Let me show you the next photograph here. This is lawyer Akufado, and this is the man who says Akufado was his lawyer. Okay, no problem. Now, this is one of the last times that Akufado acted for anybody, and the last time Akufado became was a lawyer for anybody was in the year 2000. Keep that in mind. The year 2000. It could be 99, but let's, let's say it's 2000. The year 2000 would have been the last time that President Akufuado uh, represented anyone as a lawyer. Keep in mind, that's 23 years ago. Okay. We know how old our friend here is. Oh, no, let's get back to the photograph. We'll, we'll, come to, we'll start with this soon. Let's get back to the photograph, yes. So we know how old our friend here is. Akufuado's last time of representing anybody is 23 years ago. 23 years ago. How old is, is this guy? So we, we know his age because he was tried in court and all of that. I'll get to the story. You hear it. So when we get to the part where we see his age, we will subtract 23. You will begin to laugh. You will begin to laugh. If we get to the part where his age has disclosed to the court in Dubai, we tell you the age, and you subtract 23 from the age, you begin to laugh. We used to talk about our footballers, and there's a particular footballer that we talk about all the time. I won't mention his name. He's a great guy. And so we are there across posted Myself and a friend of mine were chatting. I'm Kotoko, his hearts. You know, I have a lot of hearts of folk friends, you know that. So um, we are chatting, and then we are talking about footballers who reduce their age and blah, blah, blah. Then we talk about a certain former Hearts player who is a very great player. I won't mention his name. And then he says to me that, oh, don't talk. I say, by you people. If that guy is the age that he says he is, it means when we used to come and watch him play has here, he was 10 years old. Then we say, oh, how? I said, let's calculate. If this, today he's this, then when he was playing has, he was 10. Then we all started laughing. That's the reaction you will get when I tell you the guy's age. Who says I could for this is lawyer and you subtract 23? That, that's it. You just laugh. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Let's get to the story and understand who the guy is. All right. So... Uh, what we know about Alistair. So this is Alistair, nice, handsome, good guy, look, good looking guy. He's a Canadian national, okay? That's the first thing you need to know about Alistair. Um, Alistair is a resident in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates. That's Alistair, that's who he is, okay? Alistair is, uh, he first commenced uh, in gold business in Ghana in 2010 and entered a partnership with one Henry Osei for the sale of gold in Dubai for processing. Please, viewers, let's get the facts clear. This man, Kufado's friend, if you like, first came into Ghana to do gold in 2010. Professor Mills was president in 2010. If Akufado had won election in 2008, he would have been president in 2010. But he didn't win the election. Professor Mills was president in 2010. That's the first time this Oga comes to Ghana. It's the first time he comes to Ghana. But this Oga says Akufado was his lawyer. 
23 years ago. That's, that's the only time I could for somebody's lawyer, 23 years ago. Because I, I think you, don't, you understand that. View, don't you? Because in 2000, when he became attorney general, from there, foreign minister, from there, opposition leader, da, 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 he didn't do law. He didn't go to court. He never went to his law firm anymore. He's not been there since he walked out of the place in January 2001. He's not gone there before. And the law firm did not represent him. Akufado Prempenko, the law firm, they did not, it's not on their records, and you can check. They did not represent him. Okay. All right. I know, we know who his lawyer was. We can't mention him because he's an important Supreme Court judge now. We know all that. We have all the information. His lawyer is an important Supreme Court judge, but we cannot mention his name. All right. So in 2010, he came to Ghana to do gold. And his partner to do the gold was Mr. Henry Osei. And the, the transaction was to sell gold to Dubai, etc., etc. All right. What else? In 2014, he was accused by Mr. Osei of duping him, Mr. Osei, to the tune of 4 million United States dollars. So in 20, uh, what's the story? In 2014, uh, Matthias is, in, is now doing his gold business. He arrived in 2010. 2014, he finds a partner called Henry Osei. And uh, Henry Osei is, says that Matthias duped him. $4 million. I don't know how the duping occurred, whether he gave Matthias $4 million and Matthias didn't give him gold or he gave the gold to Matthias and Matthias didn't bring the money. I don't know. But he says he duped him $4 million. All right. Let's go on to the story. Now, a complaint was also filed against him in the UAE concerning the same issue by the same Mr. Osei. So Mr. Osei files a complaint against uh, Matthias here in Ghana. And I'm telling you that in that process, we know who his lawyer was, but he's a Supreme Court judge. We can't mention um, uh, so he was, uh, Matthias filed a complaint against him. Matthias repeated the application of complaint in the UAE as well. That's what we are finding out. And then the story goes on. In, in, in all these instances, in 2004, Nana Adodankwa never represented Matthias in 2014. In, in 2014, where was Akufado? He was, 2014, two years before 2016, he was thinking about winning the MPP's nomination. That was what was in my was he representing Matthias for? <laughs> why? The man says he was his lawyer 23 years ago. So why 20? If in 2014 he came, he was still his lawyer. So he doesn't, you know, 20, 23 years ago, Akufado was his lawyer. So in 2014, I'm sure, and his first time he came to Ghana was 2010. So if Akufado was his lawyer in, in 23 years ago, they must have uh, sealed that uh, partnership or client uh, uh, lawyer relationship either out of the country or by internet or something. Uh, something like that, because he didn't come to Ghana until 2010. All right. That's why I'm saying that just a cursory appreciation of the facts. Somebody says Akufado is my lawyer. You look at Akufado. Akufado, when was the last time he represented somebody? Okay, let's check the person. You check the person's age. Then you subtract 23, you get what you get. You say, oh, but that, that's, what, it's, that's a cursory appreciation of the facts. Just, just a very cursory one. No proper, detailed, just a casual one will reveal to you that this is not a matter that you can score political points with. Just the casual appreciation of the facts will reveal to any person that this is not a matter that you want to score political points. If you're not careful, you'll be embarrassed. You will know, but, ah, well, anyway. Uh, in all these instances, uh, in 2014, Anado never represented uh, Mr. Matthias. Okay, now this is the catch. This is it. Mr. Matthias is believed to be in his late 30s or early 40s. <laughs> okay, so let's do worst case scenario, worst. Let's give him 45. They said late 30s or early 40s. Let's give him 45. Okay, calculator. Give me back the photograph of Akufado and him as a lawyer. Let's, let's do that. Please, calculator, viewers, calculator, get ready. 45 minus 23, what do we get? 22. So the man says, Akufuado was his lawyer when he was 22 years old. In fact, 22 years old means that Akufuado was his lawyer in the year 2000, which is unlikely. But at the year 2000, Akufuado, as a member of parliament, was able to represent clients. So we don't know. We don't know whether he did represent him or not, but that's the last time he can represent him. So that's the year 2000. If the representation was in the year 2000, then Opana was 22. If the representation was earlier, say five years earlier, 
1995, for instance, when Akufado was a full-blown barrister at law, going to court every day, going to, to at that time he wasn't even in parliament, so court was his full-time job. If you do five years uh, behind, the guy was what, 17? Yeah, 22 minus five. Yes. 17. If you, if you push the analysis to Akufado representing him, which is very plausible, because at that time, that's the thing Akufado was in full law. In 1996, he became a member of parliament, so he was still doing law, but by 1995, he was full law. If it's 1995, then Opana was 17 when Akufado was a lawyer. If it's 2000, Opana was 22. He must have still been in university. And then the guy sits there and says, All right, I know Akufado is my lawyer. And then you know the story and you, without a cursory appreciation, you still think you can score political points with a story like this. I mean, I don't get it. So please, the investigations must start. I mean, I've seen social media, very serious people say that, oh, Attorney General must investigate. Like, ah, bah, I don't even get it. What is this? Why are we debasing the conversation like that? Why? It, it, the, 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 the hunger and the hunger for power it should be fought intellectually. Your hunger and your thirst for power should be fought intellectually. Deploy your intellectual weapons. Deploy that to win power. Because when you do that, then you will win power with principles and with policy that you have marketed, that you have thought about, that you have understood. And so you can roll it out and it will be innovative. That's the way you can have a government that does innovative things because they have been thinking about it in opposition and that is the way they deployed it in the campaign. The campaign is about ideas. I'm in opposition. I know what the government is doing. This is what I will do better. Innovative ideas, things that we haven't seen before. Something called WDY. Then you put it out. One district, one factory, they put it out. They said one village, one dam, they put it out. They said planting for food and jobs, they put it out. So come and tell us X, Y, Z. It means this, that, that. This is what we'll do. We've thought through it. We've done. Sometimes even when you put it out, you, you see you haven't thought through it properly. Because if you look at the free SHS policy, for instance, Akufado had done a lot of work on it by 2015. So the free SHS policy he had talked about in 2009, the 2015 one was better because he had been thinking about it for a long time and correcting the this, putting this together, dotting the I's and crossing the T's and all of that. So even if the policy is innovative and this original. It may come out and you have civil society question you and you can readjust it. Even if that is it, it is still a better nation builder than finding a story like this to score political points that Akufado does money laundering. What was the meaning of that? Let's get back to the story. Now, the reason why I have uh, 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 Mustafa here, it's important to the Akufado gold story. When Henry Osei reported, uh, he reported the guy, the Canadian, that when Henry Osei reported a Canadian that um, uh, he had defrauded him, he needed a surety in Ghana. The, the Canadian needed a surety in Ghana. Who was the surety? It is Mustafa. Now, who is Mustafa? Mustafa is the Deputy General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress. So that's the worst part of the story. Mustafa here is the Deputy General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress. It's the same National Democratic Congress elements that are suggesting that Akufuado must be investigated for his relationship with Matthias. They don't even know or they've forgotten or they didn't find out that when Matthias was arrested in Ghana, the surety that he selected in 2014 is Mustafa. This same Mustafa is the General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress. So that if Matthias is a bad man truly, I don't know whether he's bad, I don't think he's bad, but if it is, he's truly a bad man and he has political relations in Ghana, verifiable political relations, it will be with Mustafa, who is the Deputy General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress. Abide with me. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm done.